Hey guys, this is Triptych. I have a new commentary today. This is Triptych's mod version 1.6. I have a 2 vs 2 game. And I have been required to post this quickly. So today is Saturday, April 12th. And we will see when I actually get it up to YouTube and to the forums. Just to spite you guys, I think I'm probably going to upload this like immediately after we play it. Or like get it up tonight. To prove I can do it. Okay, so uh, today it's a 2 vs 2. Um, alliances game, so they just found out who's with who. We have bottom left is Warp Core and Mort versus top right is Ugly and Shadow. And people are already scouting each other pretty quickly. Unfortunately, Warp Core got a bit too close there. So Warp Core is a Federation player. His ally Mort is also Fed. Oh. So we have a quadruple Fed game today. <laughs> and we'll get to see some nice Triptychs mod changes and how they interact with each other. Um, a couple things, let's see, in the next version 2.0 it's been decided I'm going to uh, remove the Risner torpedo platform and make it so that they both have the Mason one because the Risner one causes out of sync issues. Among a couple other things. I'm just thinking about how that would limit them, uh, how it will relate to each other being Mason or Risner. So, um, yeah, let's see, Warp Core was Risner, and his ally uh, Mort is Mason, so Risner, Mason. Ugly the Great is Undetermined, and Shadow is also Undetermined. So, um, yeah, a couple things. The, the major difference that I made is Warp Ends are now capped based on your chassis level, which... Uh, means that if you're gonna can if you're gonna depend on them heavily then you also need to be teching up your chassis. So Warp Core is not really doing anything out of, out of his Antares yard. But it looks like he's going for warp for a warp in pretty quickly, especially doing the Antares yard before the engineering. Yeah that's a warp and rush. So and then his ally is doing a very similar thing, only as Mason he's getting a couple sabers. They may just be to augment his firepower. But he got his second mining station up, which is going to delay the uh, Starfleet command a bit. It's not its not very common to see uh, sabers along with engineering, so it could be he's just exploring the mod a bit, and he isn't focusing on a specific strategy really hard. Um, over here, Shadow's about to finish his Antares yard, so he is also uh, Risner, and he's getting chassis level 2, so he's going for high-tech stuff early. And then Ugly the Great, I'm expecting to see a yard. Yeah, right there. He is also a Risner. So we only have one Mason here, and everyone else is Risner. Um, some people have actually been telling me that they like, that they think Mason is a bit overpowered for the current setup. It's tricky because, like I say, Mason now has the cheaper chassis levels while where Risners go faster, which is a big selling point for a lot of people. He also has the more powerful turrets and the stronger small yard chips. However, uh, Risner's appeal, a large amount of it comes from the Avalon right now because I've made the Arati Yard cheaper to get to. Uh, people are really liking to use their early Avalons as they supplement the fleet so well. So, let me see. Uh, Shadow is, I'm expecting to see an Arati Yard over here. Ah, well, mining. This one would probably be an Arati Yard if it's not a platform. Um, this map is Red Space, and as you can see, Oh, the platform, okay. They have an expansion between each other and forward, so I guess it's up to this player, the top and bottom players, to claim their forward expansions, and the other player sort of gets the safe one. And then they have the back moon, which is just extra dilithium, and then the tritaniums in the corner. So Ugly is already getting this one here. And we'll see if Warp Core or Mort goes ahead. Um, Mort is getting chassis level 2 as Mason. Uh, let's see, Warp Core is now building Intrepids. He's at chassis level 1 and getting his warp ins. So we're going to see some Intrepids and warp ins from Warp Core. He hasn't really expanded. Okay, there he goes. Mort is getting chassis level 2, and then we'll see if he... I think he's going to send his... He's going to get this expansion over here, but it looks like he isn't interested in moving forward. A little safety platform back here. Although, against other Federation, he's never going to need this platform. This would be a lot more important versus a Klingon or Romulan player, or even Borg, but you don't need that against Federation because they're really not going to come around that way. Or at least I don't expect them to, especially if you've got an expansion here. So, 
Um, Ugly's plans involve dual Antares? No, single Antares. Okay, he's going early Akira's. So he, he got his chest at level 2, and as Risner, they'll have increased offense. Honestly, the Risner Akira, I, I like it, but the Mason Akira tends to be a bit nastier. Because this one, I wonder if it'll show it, no. This one has, it's like 25-28, or 26-28, while as the Mason one is 22-32. So his defensive value is so high on these Akiras, makes them ridiculous. While the Risner ones pump out a lot more damage. But the Mason ones actually, they're, they, be, they, they take the, uh, the late game ship role of, you know, you just can't kill it off. It can always get back in repair, and so they start to build up. So there, Ugly the Great has his Starfleet... Where's the Starfleet Command? Oh no, sorry, that's Warp Corps warping. Trying to stall this platform because Ugly the Great does not have any ships. A ri an Akira start is very slow. And we see one last Intrepid joining in. I don't think they're going to kill much. They may get a Miner, maybe two. Um, but soon there will be an Akira out. Um, yeah, Ugly the Great really doesn't have much to defend this. So he may just need to sit all of his miners right here at the yard. At the same time, if he does do that, then uh, Warp Core really isn't going to get very many kills. As you can see, all he can really do is keep on forcing this guy to cancel his platform. And now Shadow is coming over with his two ships. He's getting Akira's up. And he's also going to be pumping out of Narada Yard soon. He has a very fortified expansion. So here we see uh, the Constructor made it in. They're almost getting a freighter kill, but they're not gonna. They're, they're just too close to the yard. So now it's up to Warp Core to get out. Because these, these ships from Shadow and Ugly may chase him down. So he has to be very careful not to lose these Excelsiors. And you can see there, the Akiras are chasing. He, this is the right way to do it, though. He got the Excelsiors on the far side of the fleet, and now he's going to move out. Oh, he almost got a scout kill there, but... Yeah, now he needs to keep going, and nothing's really going to die, I don't think. If anything dies, it would be this Excelsior, but it takes reduced damage from medium range, so... Yeah, nothing's going to die here. Meanwhile, um, Warp Core has now claimed this middle expansion, and he's going to be mining out of there. Uh, more Intrepids. He's... Pretty soon, he's going to have plenty of, like, more production, or more income than he knows what to do with. It's time for him to get another factory. Um, Mort has this Dilithium Moon, and he's getting his Starfleet command, so we're going to start seeing more and more warpins as time goes on. Who's... Oh, I see. Shadow's losing his scout to these two little sabers. That took a while. <laughs> okay, so it's interesting to note, um, the higher chassis levels, both these bottom players, I think, are at chassis level 1, which means they're they're capped to one warp in. As the, the galaxy costs two slots, and then these each cost one slot. So I expect to see a chassis level 2 come out here so that he can get more warp ins. The top team, now there's, yeah, there are Avalons coming out here. Um, he has these platforms ready to upgrade at any time. So right now, the top team have a lot more income than the bottom team. Um, as soon as this gets set up, they will be at 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They'll be at 9 moons to the bottom team's uh, 7 moons. So until Mort claims this expansion, they're, they're really going to be lower. They're going to have less production than the other side. And with every minute that passes, the top team has a little bit more resources. So, um, it looks like Shadow doesn't really have plans to go for Starfleet Command, at least not yet. Um, with his Avalons and Akuras, yeah, there's the 25-28. He'll have a very solid fed ball, fed roll going, and now Ugly is really massing up on these. He wants to get the defensive patterns, and maybe something else. I also want to take a minute to look at their economies here. So, uh, Ugly is pretty high on Dilithium, naturally because he has this extra Dilithium expansion here. Shadow is just about even, and he's getting a second Erati Yard. That's how they're designed to be used now, like they build so slowly. You're supposed to have multiples. But his economy, I mean, he, he's skirting it pretty well. Uh, Mort is sitting on... Yeah, he's about even as well. He's starting to get more dilithium, 
or he will as soon as he starts mining this problem. Oh yeah, so they're they're nine to six. They only have six moon pairs on the bottom, or six moons. So here's another attack by both bottom fed players, um, trying to take out this yard. I wonder. If, I don't know if that's gonna work. I think they'll probably get messed up by a shadow's fleet coming in before that happens. Uh, and what was that? Who just called in a warp in? <laughs> Somebody called in a warp in not understanding the way the new cap works. I'm sorry about that. Maybe someone who hadn't read the way I changed it. But there is Mort's second warp in. I think that, that must have been uh, Warp Core's warp in that didn't stay. So they are going to kill this yard, but there's another yard right next to it. So they may take some heavy losses. There's another Excelsior coming down. And now they're going to start firing on ships. Um, Warp Core is pulling back. There goes one Monsoon, and the Saber's probably going to die. And this Akira takes a lot of fire. There's, oh, one or two, one or two ships stayed behind. I wonder if they, they clicked on or something. They need to get all their ship groups to leave. So, I don't know, like, there were, there were some resources lost in that Antares yard, but I think in general this is going in the top team's favor. Um, honestly, I'd say the resources lost in that battle were a bit even. Probably a little more resources lost on the top side. But the mere fact that the top side is significantly outmining the bottom side. Like, Mort just got this up, but... Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think Warp Core just didn't catch the fact that his... Yeah, I guess the tooltip is on the warp in. If you mouse over it, it will tell you what your current limit is and what increases it, but I hope Warp Core realizes that and goes ahead and gets chassis level 2 so that he can call in more warp ins. And it looks like Warp Core wants to go for this forward moon. He just sent that guy out there. We'll see if he makes it. Um, now the top team are really starting to get their the Federation Industrial Juggernaut going. The way I've balanced it in Triptych's mod is to make it a lot better at getting these big fleets going. Or, you know, to get to your late game tech. Like, you really, really want to get in the Roddy Yard. It's just a good idea. Because it's so much cheaper and it builds slower. So, uh, I think Mort, this is also, this may be Mort's first time ever playing Triptych's mod. So that may be, he may have been expecting the Roddy Yard to be a whole lot more expensive. I don't think he's read about all the changes. And meanwhile, Shadow and Ugly both have played many games with it. So now, uh, Shadow has dropped off his Antares production, and he's just uh, cranking out Antari, er, Avalons. And with this kind of mining, he'll probably have enough income to do... Uh, I want to... Actually, I don't know. I don't know if he'd have enough to do three Roddy Yards pumping Avalons. Because the build time increases I applied were mostly to the tech to the chassis level three ships, the Avalon is just a little bit slower building, but it's the it's the Defiant and the Sovereign that take forever now. Like you you got to have lots of yards building them, if you want to get them in any significant numbers. So here's an entire yard entire yard with Allied Repair going up for Warp Core, and this is going to be a very nice position. Although this map has this green nebula here, which could like, they're not using it. It's almost out of politeness that they're not using it because they know it would be weird. But if they do use this green nebula, it could it could cause some weird things to happen. I mean, they're both fed balls, so they're, they're going to have enough ships that they can do the damage anyway. But it could really, I mean, like if you had an Akira with defensive patterns going and it ran into a green nebula, that could negate a whole lot of damage from the other side. A little more scout play going on. So now Mort has moved into Akira's, and does he have any yet? Yeah, so this is a Mason Akira, which it only does 22 offense, but it has 32 defense. So it's it's really a tough nut to crack. Of course, when you're combined with other uh, Federation, you know, the Akira isn't actually going to get shot until the, all these Intrepids and stuff are gone. So here's a little push out by Mort. He was just starting chassis level 3, which as Risner is a, a not a very long time. Well, okay, it's still pretty long. It also requires the Arati Yard. So he has this one back here, and he's probably hoping to build some really nice chassis level 3 ships out of it. Um, you see, because the yards are so cheap and they build so slowly, you'll want to have multiples. Um, but I'm sure he'll learn that soon. 
He'll learn through experience. Uh, Warp Core is delaying his ship production in order, in order to get something out. What is he getting? Yeah, there's his. He's getting chassis level two in order to unlock his second warp in. So this, I mean, this platform right here could have a significant impact on the game. It can't be a torpedo platform because, well, one because he's he doesn't have Erati Yard, but two because he's Risner and you don't want to do, cause out of sync issues. But even even one or two platforms at this forward location, I think you should build another one with this. And this is one thing I've been really looking at lately, is the way that platforms can affect a game. Because right now, this is a really good position for them to have. They really want to have, like, multiple platforms here holding this sector of space. Because when they have this, pretty much nothing Warp Core has can be raided, as long as they own this. Who's, whose Warpin is that? Is it someone who can keep it? Oh, okay, that's Mords. Oh, that's right, he does have chest level 2. He's getting chest level 3. So yeah, with all of these warp-ins, and, like, this yard with allied repair, um, when they have this position, like, they're slowly getting up their economy. Now Mord's mining here. So now, the bottom team actually have a little bit more mining than the top team. Although the top team has the technology in place. I'm expecting chassis level 3. Yeah, so Shadow is holding off on ships for just a minute getting his chassis level 3, and then he's going to start cranking stuff out of here. Ugly the Great, <laughs> he's got two Irati Yards producing Avalons, and I wonder... Oh, he's going to improve weapons. I've made a lot of the ship improvements a little bit cheaper than they were previously. So that's going to be a warp in for Warp Core. Yep, there it goes. And these guys are getting a lot of galaxies. Oh, another thing I've done is I've changed the uh, warp in chances, although I don't know if I did it in 1.6 or if it's in... Uh, 2.0, but I've made it so that the Centaur and the Rigel type will show up a little bit more often. They used to they used to show up like 3% of the time, or like 10%. Now it's it's 10% for the rare centers and uh, what like 20%. It's a little bit higher for them. <laughs> I think I made it so that the Centaur could appear on either side with a 15% chance, and then like the Rhode Island refit and the Rigel engine refit are gonna be. 10% chances instead of 3% chances. So, between the two top players, okay, now their chassis level 3 ships are going to start going pretty soon. Um, yeah, so the Avalons, they have like full fleets of Avalons and accurate, or, you know, full caps of Avalons from both players. So there are a ton of fighters, and those fighters are going to take a ton of fire in the early parts of the battle and do a lot of damage. And now we get to see a big fight coming. This one little scout is going to give his life <laughs> to warn the others. And now they're upgrading turrets. I wonder if this one's going to get killed or upgraded. Um, this could have a significant impact. I don't know. I think the bottom team should maybe be fighting back at their own starbase. But Shadow's ships are not in position yet, and there an Avalon is dying very quickly. The supply cost for these is quite high. Um, there is some of Shadow's ships taking fire. It's hard to tell what ships on the bottom are getting shot at. I think it's mostly Intrepids, which are taking reduced damage from the Akuras. And this is also going to be a lot about focus firing. So as you can see, the top ships, the top team ships are near their yard, but they can't really get into the yard at all. Uh, everything is dying way too fast for anybody to retreat or repair. And I think it's, we're just going to watch the slug fest for a, while, for a while and see how it shakes down. I think the top team have the stat advantage right now. You can see Ugly is desperately trying to get his stuff into the yard, but it ain't happening. But I mean also there's this turret firing the entire time. <laughs> this one is not upgraded. The bottom team had a lot of intrepids which are taking reduced damage from the Akuras, but I think soon they're all going to be gone. And look at that cloud of fighters. There is way too many fighters here. So the bottom team is losing this fight. They need to pull out. I mean, they, they've they gotten quite a lot of kills. It's true. But if they stay, they will lose everything. So, I mean, yeah, they're, they're backing out a little. They're still killing stuff. They're still killing Akuras. Um, also, because the Akuras have those civilian shuttle bays... Or some of them do. Oh yeah, these ones do. Uh, those that the Avalons that died 
their fighters were picked up. So now the bottom team needs to retreat, but they're getting confused. They're not they're not doing it together. They need to make a concerted effort and leave slowly. They need to get their slow ships out and follow behind. Because now they're just gonna get killed. And they need to coordinate. Okay, now they're backing off. But I think these last couple ships of Morts are gonna get mopped up. And I think yeah, there's just there's too much firepower on the top team side here. Yeah, and Warp Core is calling the GG, although I think he still would have stood a chance if he'd upgraded these turrets. Although, okay, looking at it now, he's very low on ships. I thought he got some more stuff out. So that was an interesting match. Um, I think the Federate, I think the top team teched up a whole lot more. And maybe in Triptych's mod, I've made it too easy to tech up. Um, however, it is also a rather large map that's a bit difficult to raid. And since they're both Federation players, they didn't really have many opportunities to raid. So I think from the beginning, teching up was the way to go. Uh, who just joined my channel? Okay. Hey. So what did you think? Um, we should attack up for at least one of us. <laughs> um, yeah, four feds. I don't know. There's not really much opportunity to raid, to be honest. So. Yeah. It was a bit of a and, just a straight up tech yeah. race there. I mean, Nukov said he's not played for like <laughs> two years or something, so he kind of he was a bit slow to get going. But I think we would have been okay for the, if one of us had tapped up. Yeah, that's understandable. I mean, the Trappers are good against the Akiras, but not against the Avalons. Yeah, and there were a lot of Avalons. Yeah, there was too many. Okay, I'm gonna close up my recording now. So this is Triptych signing off.